and we have in data folder in data folder we are having this training and test data then uh, when you move to inside in the training set you are having the transcription train transcription the txt file and the one which is which is having the transcription uh, the audio file address as well as the transcription so this will uh, this will act as a, a, a y value or the independent value as or a target value for your model then uh, in the training part there is also a folder called wave so the wave folders contains each audio files which is uh, related to your training task and those names are uh, like used as a primary key to access your uh, data set so in order to interlate your um, audio file plus the transcription one you will, you, will, you will use the one which is stated on the text file or uh, you can use this uh, as an ID to get the data set from the web folder and you can create a dictionary file or a metadata which describes which interlates your transcription plus your uh, audio file and that metadata is used for further, uh, further to load the data set as a XM file or as a target length. Am I clear? I think you're not clear. You can repeat. Okay. In the uh, uh, text file, you are having these two things, which is the one is uh, the address of your web file, and the other is the transcription of the web file or the audio transcription. So, for if you think of, if you can see for the first one, it uh, when I go back to the web data set and if I check uh, if I check the file switch uh, and it will uh, let, me, let me I don't think so if it plays or not but if you check back uh, is there anyone who have the access for this folder I just want to ask you for help but if someone who listens the Swahili one Jackie can you listen to yeah yeah so yeah you can listen to Swahili okay just go to the wave folder okay uh, and to this address wave file the first one uh, the first one yes okay in the train web file. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it's just loading. I can't play it. Okay. If it plays, it's exactly it says that uh, the similar to the transcription written in characters here yeah okay if you have this the you the data you text to your computer to understand uh, uh mallet you 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 you're too faint we can't hear what is being broken
extremely faint. Hello? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. It's kind of faint though. Now also? Yeah, it's, you, you can continue with this here. What about now? Oh, yeah, this is good. Okay. Uh, does it fix or you cannot hear me now? I can hear you. Much better. So. Okay, uh, let me try and if you can get the idea. So, the main thing is here is to interlate your audio file with your transcription. So, in order to interlate that thing, uh, you should have to create some metadata which can load a file from a certain path or from this path and which can have the information of its transcription to that specific audio. So your metadata contains the list of dictionaries, which it, which tells you uh, how do, how can you, you load the data from the either from your drive or from your specific folder, and with this uh, label or with this transcription in order to give us input as an input to your model so did you get the general idea or shall i repeat it Basically, we have two things to train this speech recognition model. The first one is your general training data set or the data which you can uh, extract feature from that. So that data is similar to our... Uh, that data is similar to our uh, audio file. So the audio file is the one which we are going to use as a training or if, uh, as a, and a feature to our model and the labels are the possible transcriptions so just to have this information for your model as an input you will create a metadata and or a data about the data that can tell you this uh, for this transcription this file is located in this, this this folder. For example, for the first one, you can go back to the Suali dataset and to the web data, data dataset, and the you can get the first uh, audio by this index or by this file name as an index. You will access that web file from your uh, drive or from your storage. So, as I have to answer your question, I think. Okay. 
which may contain the past, the audio file, corresponding. Okay, let me show you my uh, uh, small metadata which I have trained the model for Amaric one. So, if you see this one, it's a metadata for uh, for my validation uh, data set, and it contains a list of dictionaries. And the first dictionary, uh, the first dictionary contains a key where the my audio file is found, and a, po a possible transcription for that, which is the initial trans uh, the. Uh, transcription text for that and the duration of the audio so in order to sort the audio based on the based on the need so we have used these three informations to extract the metadata Okay. Uh, so the speak UTT file contains the file address of your web data. So it it, it of your uh, files are located there, and you can access the file based on that index or file name. And to make the JSON file, uh, you can follow these steps. I have created the one and I have shared yesterday. And, and just you will uh, load the transcription file uh, before everything. Uh, starts then you will uh, have once you are having this the transcription file uh, in place then you will start to create uh, to read the web files from mm, the address you specify in uh, your training or either your test data then you will try to open those things into your dictionary then you will dump that dictionary to uh, a list uh, that contains uh, into a list of dictionaries, then the dictionary will start to uh, have an information for you about the duration, the key, and the text. So it's simple and just loading the transcription one. I just have used this simple scenario, just first to load the transcription. Then once I have the transcription, I will go down to extract the uh, audio file names from the, the, the where they are existing in my folder. And if you see my folder structure, It contains this uh, train uh, and validation data, those way, uh, those which contains the web file. So I can iterate through this file, and I will I will generate the recordings, uh, audio links, and or the duration of those audios, plus the their file exact file path. 
which uh, leads them, to, which leads me to uh, exact file names with the transcription. Then the final data looks like this, and the one which you dump into your JSON file. Okay, Jackie. Uh, hi, Malish. Uh, my question is. Uh, with the Amharic data, uh, it is uh, kind of uh, straightforward with how you load it and uh, Sorry? How, you, how you go to the path. But for Swahili, we have uh, a folder. After you go to the web file, there's now another folder that has the, like, the general um, index. And then now inside that, there's where you get now your data. So are we supposed to loop in every folder and get the data from each and every folder? For example, if you are preparing your data for the training purpose, you will go to yeah. the folder, then uh, you will start to uh, load the, the text file, the transcription file, which is, uh, which is named as text. Then, based on that, you will iterate uh, into your web uh, folder to get the file for each uh, audio file. Uh, the same is true for the test part, but you don't have to go it into each uh, folder. But the, the essential one is the training process and to get the transcription with the audio file first. Your final goal is to get a file pass, uh, a dictionary which contains the file, the file pass plus the transcription of the duration. Okay. Milky, is that clear? Uh, I'm afraid not really. Hmm? Uh, no, 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 not really. I wouldn't like to you. I haven't understood. Okay, think of like this. You are expected to tell. Uh, just you are expecting, uh, I'm expecting to tell me where did your file located and you would have to point me where each file and its corresponding transcription. That's the main idea of this metadata process. Is that clear? Are you okay? Uh, <laughs> the Amoric one is uh, at the work with us and it was simple, but for the Swahili, the same strategy is followed. So you can get in, in the main thing is just to let your audio file pass plus the transcription to access. It's just giving it an information to your system in order to load the audio file from uh, the specified directory plus uh, to its possible transcription. Once you have this thing, just uh, you are something you have something uh, to take to your uh, machine where your audio file is located and where uh, the, uh, the, the possible transcription for that specific audio file is. 
that once you have this information, you will pass to uh, the pre-processing part and you will follow certain pre-processing steps and cleaning the data, whether you are loading the audio, extracting features from the audio uh, or data augmentation. Any process can be performed in the data uh, pre-processing state. So you will uh, provide this as an input and you will try to uh, iterate through your training data set or test data set to load each audio and extract features like male spectrograms from that. And the flow will look like uh, okay, the general flow of events will look like this. You have the metadata which contains the file, the transcription, and the duration. Then you will input that data into your data generator uh, or data generator class. And that data generator class will load the audio in this format. Then it will load also the transcription, the possible transcription for that specific uh, audio. Then the next step is to extract features from this audio. Like I have used this mail spec program and I've extracted some features which is expressed in terms of milliseconds. Then for the, the transcription or for the text file, uh, as we have seen in the week zero challenge, you, 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 you didn't put the, the characters to machine learning models, so you should have to have certain uh, annotation to them, either in one host or just level encoding. So here I have created the in a, a dictionary of uh, index uh, that contains the character with its uh, possible uh, index value. So, for example, for this specific scenario, uh, for each character, I have given a certain index for them, including the space value. Then, having that, you will have uh, with a ready input which is given to your model or to your as a running model or CNN model, the whatever you and you will provide this uh, as a training and test data uh, input like the male spectrogram features for uh, as X input or as a feature and the uh, transcription uh, which is, which are converted into index as a related, then your uh, model tries to uh, predict, uh, tries to train and learn how to predict or how to interrelate these features with the uh, Okay, um, what about now? It's better? So, uh, having those features plus the labels which are converted into index and you will give that to your model and uh, your uh, spectrogram dimension or the one which you are specifying while you are extracting these uh, spectrogram features, they will be act as a model dimension for your model part. Then. Once you have given the parameters to your modeling part, which is either number of inputs, file size, anything related to modeling this deep learning model, or just a simple intro, uh, a specification to your model, then you will have uh, the prediction one, and it will start to predict uh, based on what it trains, and this is all scenarios and the final output for this one will be
your possible transcription plus the uh, word error rate or the evaluation metrics which you have used for your speech recognition task. Okay, Kate, you can go. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask at what point do we convert the um, to the two types there are the two types of channels so at what point do we convert the what is the name the mono to the stereo is it before yeah. putting the audio in the in the dictionary or Hello, I can't hear you. Okay, when you are uh, creating the male spectrogram features, you are converting your uh, one dimensional data into two dimensional data, which is converting from mono to stereo. Okay, thank you. Okay, so yes, you can use this spectrogram feature, uh, spectrogram features, or uh, spectrogram features for model training part, and the acoustic modeling is all about. Uh, just having this mapping the Hello. your futures to a specific uh, uh, label because when you are um, 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 when I am talking uh, the word acoustic media is not similar to you so in order to have uh, that variety of speech we can change the, mo uh, the labels into characters and we can uh, extract each feature from the uh, male spectrogram features to which is m mapping of your male spectrogram features with the input the acoustic model any other question? Hello? So, uh, here I have a simple speech recognition model which I have extended from the one which works by mm -hmm. the Melani and I hope it will help you in uh, guiding how what is next, how to do, and let me describe uh, some of them roughly. So here we have uh, some sort of basic utility functions and that can convert the characters into uh, its possible index and the one which extract the spectrogram as well as the one which converts this text to index and in, the, in which done this the conversion between text to index as well as index to text or for characters and the one which calculates the word error rate and, and the next step is the data generation stuff 
So for the data generation stuff, I have this uh, a data generation class, and which can take that uh, JSON file as an input, and it will generate uh, an object which can uh, return back the possible features as plus the, everything needed from the data perspective, and. And for the training purpose, we have this CTC loss function, which can relate our uh, uh, predicted values to, which can uh, calculate the predicted value plus the uh, one which is uh, in the actual transcription, and it will uh, act as a loss function for the uh, speech recognition. Then the next step is for definition of model. Uh, here I have defined simple RNN model, and it have a time distributed uh, layer as well as uh, it's a, almost a, sig a single layer simple RNN or uh, RNN with having a single layer input and it's not bidirectional, it's not deep that much. So you can have uh, a deep RNA model. You can also add additional activation functions here to enhance the model based on my training. My model doesn't work well on predicting uh, the data set. And here is it is the starter notebook and you can go through this one and you will find uh, some insight or how to how to go in through the flow of events from starting from the first phase to from preparing the metadata up to the modeling and the prediction part. Then once you have the your model trained and you have uh, set everything related to your uh, model, you, you, you will have the uh, dashboard or the uh, so any either it's a streamlit or a web application which can uh, take a voice input and that uh, that that, uh, that voice input will be recorded as a web file then those web file will be given to your predictor model and you start predicting and you will return back the prediction from the from your model you will use the trans text and text for uh, Swahili for Amharic. It's a trans text, the label of the possible transcriptions. Uh, for uh, and also for training, it takes some time almost um, it takes me almost one for amaric yes you you will use trans for training trans te uh, test uh, uh, text and for english uh, yes it's enough to use this trans text one Okay. Any other question? Okay. Yes, I will share uh, both the notebooks for the modeling part plus the metadata. Uh -huh. 
and you can go through it and if you have questions we can share and we can discuss on that thing just as they start up you can start from this one and for uh, just for improvement think of like how to improve this uh, training by what should I have to add and in order to get better performance so my performance is almost weird let me show you if you see this is my prediction and I hope it was uh, visible visible for those who can read Amari and it's totally something weird which I get okay uh, while you are training uh, just you can think of like how can you have uh, audio files which contains uh, the same size because your audio does not have the same thing the same duration so how do you tackle that either by padding or truncating them or sorting them uh, or for and also for different uh, feature extraction techniques how can you uh, rather than this spectrum spectrogram or mid spectrogram uh, or other techniques and also creating new data set from the existing one by augmenting or by using one of the augmentation techniques like time shifting or pitch, uh, pitch stretching uh, and you can go through just to analyze what's just to understand what's your data set about and how can you uh, prepare that data to switch to the neural net machine learning model okay. any other question uh, I think the if you have written the um, idea raised by Elias or someone on the rocket chat, he have provided that uh, rather than partying and things like uh, doing this. It, uh, just filtering of the audio into duration uh, into the, by filtering those audios by duration will be better so you can try in, uh, which is best or feasible for our specific scenario like sorting is also the other option which you are you can do and have used the sorting one Okay, uh, let's wrap up here and if you have any uh, doubts or if you get stuck, we can talk or we can write on the rocket chat and let us discuss there your ideas and for the questions you can have the like you will discard or you can disprove the questions by giving justifications like the one which gives uh, by the alias and it's just a startup to help you to identify how to work and where to start, how to go through these audio files. Yeah, I will share the notebook. I have shared some, but now I will, I will move it to 
you the folder. Okay, thanks, guys. Okay, bye.